Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody? Hello. Good afternoon, Professor. Yeah, I'm fine. Hi, good afternoon, Eva. Good afternoon, Dexton. Um, okay, I, I looks like I have six people here and um, quickly checking what, how many people are in today's forum. Yeah, I have six. I, what's, what's going on? I have at least, I believe I have like 20 people in, in this class. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, section 1400. And on the roster, I have like 22 people. Of course, some of them, you know, uh, <clears throat> maybe, you know, if I, it's better to... Uh, I think I should. Uh, yeah. What are those see, names? Uh, a lot of red, you know, you can see the red, red lines. Numbers? They are all, this is the uh, total number of absences so far. And then uh, the, those who have more than six absences are six absences, right? That's like, you know, um, uh, three weeks, six absences, three weeks. We have, you know, uh, uh, 14 weeks master. I mean, it's 15 weeks, but, you know, uh, taking out like, you know, um, uh, how, uh, Labor Day and things like that, you know, uh, um, uh, Columbus Day, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, taking out those, you know, it boils down what's to... The, what's the total weeks. thing? What is that thing? Uh, those are the points you have earned so far. For example, uh, look, every day you get 0 0.167 for attendance. And then, you know, this person got 0 0.25 for answering, you know, giving a, uh, like, you know, uh, average answer. And then, you know... Uh, so total of all of that, total of all of that, right? That's attendance and participation points so far, okay? And some people barely have, you know, like, or some people have zero, <laughs> obviously, uh, no participation, no attendance. Some people have, you know, um, look, 0 0.17, that's just one attendance right that's just one attendance right and most of you um uh so it's like you know we are uh, you know some people uh, look nine absences you know nine absences that means you know uh, um uh four week uh and you know that means you know it's been like five weeks and this person has never showed up I mean, it's, it's more than five weeks, of course, because we had, you know, um, like, uh, because I'm of, you know. some uh, bigger numbers, though. I'm seeing, like, nine mm -hmm. absences. I'm seeing bigger mm -hmm. numbers, like nine. Nine? This Doesn't is the mean... maximum. Max. Oh. So far, you know, no, no attendance. Right? And look, uh, because of holidays... It's actually, it's been more than nine weeks, uh, five weeks so far, right? Starting from, we started uh, in the last week of October, like, you know, 25, 26, right? This week, that's week one, week two, week three, right? Four, week four, week five, week six, week seven. It's been seven weeks, right? Of course, because of you know um, some holidays in in September, um, uh, the the week that we the number of weeks that we have had actual actually classes. Uh, oh, wait a like, second! Uh, we have we have uh, two classes a week, right? And then you right. there were seven weeks. So shouldn't there, it's been seven weeks. So shouldn't there have been like fourteen? 
14 classes in total? No, no, no. There were there were holidays. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, the holidays. You understand? Yeah. This was the first week, second week. But look, in the second week, then, you know, uh, um, there was a long gap between, you know, September, uh, one week gap between September 2nd and September 9th. And then this looks like a normal, you know, then, you know, five days later we have, and then there is, you know, a long gap again, right? One week I, gap. I got, a, I got another question. I saw like on uh, can you, can you, on Blackboard. Um, okay, I hold saw, on, hold I on. Saw, like, oh, quiz. Oh. Hold on, hold on. I just, I just raised my, my uh, audio volume. Now, now go ahead. I yeah. said um, on Blackboard, I saw like you posted like a quiz or something. What does that do? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Um, look. Uh, so I was going to get to that. Um, so in the announcements, right, um, uh, I posted two, two things. One, uh, what, you know, uh, Monday I posted... Uh, Quiz one instruction, okay, and it's you just follow the instruction, and then you know you have no problem. It will become available from Friday, okay. So until then, you won't be able to see it. You can't see it until then, and then uh, that was posted already October fourth, which was yesterday. And then it was also emailed out to everyone, right? It was emailed out to everyone. And then um, uh, this was the uh, message from the uh, provost of the college. Um, this is about vaccination. So please read that carefully, right? Uh, uh, it's, it's very... Uh, it's critical because um, this is a hybrid. This is high. This is a hybrid course. Okay, so you're thinking, you know, because we never made offline. <laughs> we are always online. You think, but you know, um, officially this is designated as hybrid course. So at the end of the semester, we are supposed to meet once at the end of the semester for final. Uh, but I've been telling you, um, every final is on Connect, so um, uh, you don't, you know, um, uh, effectively, um, uh, we don't have to meet for final. But, you know, uh, I will designate one day uh, uh, for those who want to uh, meet in person, you know, uh, or if you, uh, the exam is already online, so, uh, but, you know, uh, um, there will be a you know, uh, uh, technically, since this is a hybrid class, there will have to be one day that we have to meet in person. But it will be like in December, the last day of class or uh, final day. Um, if you want to uh, uh, come to class face to face, you know, um, to meet me face to face and ask questions. Is it a must? Do we have to, Professor? Uh, professor? No, no, no. Uh, again, um, uh, I can't say if it's a must or not. I mean, it's. You know, I mean, on, even if it is a must, you can you can you know be absent on that day, right? You can you can. Be I mean, because I'm not, I'm not vaccinated, and I don't plan on getting vaccinated right now. So I just want to make sure that this is not gonna yeah. mess me up. Uh, well, I can't, I can't argue with, you know, I can't argue with people who don't want to get vaccinated. Um, but, you know, I personally, I have no problem. I mean, I have got vaccinated and I only need, you know, third, you know, booster shot. That's all. And I, you know, nobody around me, my family, no, no, you know, nobody around me had any uh, side effects or whatsoever. I mean, you know, the only side effect is, you know, it feels a little numb, you know, uh, on your arm. But with any, with any, you know, vaccination, you feel numb. I mean, you know, uh, even you know, flu vac, you know, flu vaccination, you feel numb, you know, uh, on your arm for a while. That's it. Or some people have a slight, you know, um, flu-like symptoms. 
I, I got yeah, the, I got the chip in my arm. I got the chip in mm-hmm. my arm. You know what I'm saying? When you get back, they know where you at right. at all times. <laughs> I, I got I got no problem with the vaccine. It's just that we gotta come back eight, every eight months for a booster. Like I mean, I don't know about that. Not not every eight months, just you know. Uh, nah, that's only like for people lot. sixty-five. That's only for people sixty-five and stuff like that. And it's a one-time thing. Yeah, I get it. Uh, listen, you know, um, uh, even the flu vaccine, you know, we have to take flu vaccine every year. I mean, you know, it's it's for your own safety. Um, and I have never had any. The only thing is, you know, um, I, I had shingles. I had shingles vaccination. And shingles vaccination is uh, a, a different thing. It's most most vaccines are most vaccines contain um the pathogen you know um uh passive in other words you know um weakened weakened you know uh uh pathogen uh virus or bacteria or weakened pathogen but shingles vaccination um contains unweakened you know live you know uh uh virus small but very minor dose so I had some like you know, after shingle shot, but you don't. You guys are young, you know. I mean, the shingle shot are uh, covered f- by insurance for people above 55. It used to be 60, you know, um, above uh, about people above 60, but you know, it varies from one insurer to another. Uh, but eventually. Um, uh, you you guys will get there, and then you will, you know. Uh, uh, I only waited, you know, um, uh, until the the insurance covered. Um, I had, you know, like flu-like symptom, but that's that's it, you know. Uh, after, you know, um, I took, you know, um, like aspirin or, you know, just like you know, fighting flu symptoms, you know. That's it. Other than that, you know. But, you know, uh, 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 COVID-19 vaccination. No, I had no, not even any, I, I didn't even have any slightest uh, side effect. It was just, you know, uh, just numbness in the arm for the day. You know, that's all. Um, but anyway, uh, this is important. This is the thing. If you don't get vaccinated, you're putting yourself in peril of not only losing the course, you're taking, but also financial aid, scholarships, and other enrollment dependent supports you receive. But professor, so, I signed up strictly for online classes. I didn't sign up to be to, to have to go into the building. Again, this is this is a uh, this was original, you know, from the day one. This was designated as hybrid, technically hybrid course, and I've been telling you so the. The only in-person session will be only one day. But you're not holding no tests on that day, though, right? Uh, no, the test oh. is online. Okay. Okay. I right. don't. You know, uh, I already I'll explained save that this. I'll that for my absence. I'll save that for one of my. Absence. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you can choose to be absent. Same right. Way, you can choose to be absence. absent on that day if you don't okay. want to. Uh, um, but again. Uh, this is off the record, okay? Because okay. I cannot, as a as a professor, I cannot encourage you to cut the class, right? You understand? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, so coming in that. But day if you have, if you have, a, you have to. Like, yeah, what? he's saying it's mandatory. Okay. It's mandatory, okay? Um, you have an option to cut the class, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not. You know, as a professor, what kind of professor would just just you know, let us know in advance? I could get a doctor's note. Okay, I'll go to the doctor that day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if you have a legitimate reason to be absent, you know. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, but you know, this is not coming from me. This is coming from the uh, the you know provo, the uh, vice president. Okay. So I'm just letting you know. So in your that will be in your best interest, okay? So professor. Yeah. Um, so what are we going in for the one day that we have to go in for? 
Like, okay, can we... you, can you, so uh, are you like, asking are when will be? That day if we go? Oh, I will, you know, I will, you know, meet you in person, take questions, you know, um, if you have had, you know, questions that, but the uh, final if you have unanswered questions, yeah, because it's on connect, final, the final is, all the exams are on connect, except the uh, quiz one. Okay, so since it's going to be on uh, connect, Connect um, is the is the um McGraw what Hill. Last time? What? What we used last time? That's connect. What did we What did we use last time? Like for the test that we did, that you posted it like on the assignment board, and we went there, and that's where we did it. No, 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 no. There are. Uh, look, um, the practice. Um, these are not connect. This is on Blackboard, right? Concept, ROI, concept check, ROI, practice, self yeah. test, this. and quiz one, up to quiz one, they are all uh, on Blackboard. You know, it's, it's just, you uh, know, um, you click on it. But I've, uh, look, in the announcement, I've talked about connect access code so many times, right? You need to have, and also... Uh, oh, this is a thing for the two weeks that you were talking about last class? Yeah, yeah, started. yeah, 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 yeah. So connect is where we have the book, like the online book? Uh, no, the book is, you know, uh, if you buy an ebook, yeah, you will have the book online, okay? but. If you bought, uh, if you bought the uh, custom edition, you have physical book and access code to only to the uh, test and chapter problems. Okay. And the chapter problems is what you want us to do, and we're gonna take the test on there as well, correct? After right, this. right. Look, if okay. you go into, uh, if you go, if you go into Connect, you will have access. To, I mean, this is, this is the only thing you can see for now. Look. Uh, chapter two, pre-built problems were assigned already, you know, on September 20th, and it's due October 8th, okay? So that's why I posted, when I post something there, that's for you to read. Please read. And is, is it difficult to understand? Is it difficult to comprehend that uh, message there? I made it very clear that the... You normally have two-week trial access, but then that two-week trial access has already expired because uh, whoever whoever has activated wh whoever has activated that trial access first, the clock clock starts with that person, right? So if that person activated on August 30th by September. 14th, it would have already expired for everybody, right? So if you are at the back end of that uh, flow, then you you don't have two week access. So um, that's why I requested super code to extend that uh, to extend the temporary access for another two weeks for the people who are still waiting for the book. Okay, and if Wait, you okay. have after the two weeks is up? Because we paid for the book, correct? Yeah, but you you paid for the book. So if the book, if you have the book, you must have your own access code. It comes oh, with the... Oh, uh, okay, okay. You use your own access code. Got you. Right? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, don't you get it? This is um, temporary access for the people who haven't received their book yet. Got you. If you have already received the book, you have... The ex your own access code that came with it. Okay. Right. And then this is all you can see for now. But you know, uh, let me. Uh... So. You see, I have 32 students currently enrolled in Connect, and um, 
actually, you know, total number of students I have on by the roster, you know, I should have like, you know, at least 80 students, 80 to uh, 90 students by the roster. But, you know, of course, some of them seem to be, you know, um, they um, have drifted away. Some of them, um, some of them have drifted away. I didn't know we had. To, uh, sorry, I didn't know I had to sign up to connect. Um, although I registered. Oh, sorry. What do you? Uh, look, look. I have everything has been posted. Everything has been posted in the announcement, and if you have been and anything that is posted in the announcement goes, gets emailed to everybody. So if if you have been keeping up with the class, you should you know. You should. Oh, right. I'm doing my so best again, to keep from, up with the class, sir. You have to keep up with the class, you know. Uh, bottom line. So here, um, I talked about connect uh, temporary access code. So you know you can use this code until you receive your book. But again, somebody must have you know activated this already. This because this was posted on September 29th. Someone may have you know somebody. Uh, must have activated it on like 29th or 30th. So the clock is already ticking. If you're at the tail end, you won't have two weeks, right? If, if but someone the person, activated that's so it on the everybody. 30th. Hmm? Hmm? I, I think that's a little unfair because everybody is not going to start at the same time. Well, you can you can say that to me because I'm not the one. I'm not McGraw-Hill. This is, look, it's the McGraw-Hill. You, you can't say it's unfair because so, well, what I'm trying to say, if the whole this class is the second yeah. they listen they gave you already the courtesy access two week courtesy access no that's already fine. I get that, I that, get that. But what that, I was saying that is why already you know and then so this is the second courtesy access but if we all had to share it shouldn't it have been a selected day for everybody to use it instead of just saying and start no. using it it should have just look, been a selected look. day yeah, yeah, I see what no, you're saying. No, no. Somebody could have just started. Look, there are, listen, there are four sections of this class, four sections of this, this course. How can these, can you, can you, is there a way all of these people in four different class, four classes meet together and select a day? No, no but you, you, it's, it's, it's for the whole. She was saying, no, but we all got a life that we have to keep up with too. No, no, we don't, we don't have time to waste, first of all. Look. This was posted on September 29th, and this was also e group emailed on September 29th, exactly at this time. So if you have been keeping up with the class, but, then no, you I see should. What you're saying, but just say, for instance, if me, I seen it and I go ahead and clicked on it. It's not fair to the whole class that I select. I clicked on it, and we're not on the, all on the same page as a class. So if it was posted on the 29th. Then October something, maybe you should have said, hey, guys, October such and such, everybody has to click on this link so we can use it and have the same amount of time. Because the person that clicked on it, they're not saying, hey, I clicked on it, I'm sorry. So it's, it's I'm just saying, if we all doing it together, we should have a specific day. You posted it on yeah. the 29th, so you should have said October 1st. Everybody needs to click well, on this link. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, look, it is, it's, it's your responsibility. I mean... I get that, but at the end of the day, it's the person the person who clicked on it. That he's was their responsibility. You're not saying what that, you're saying. He's that's saying the that. person who clicked on it. Yes, they did right. They clicked well, on it. Well, well, look, 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 look. It's um. The, the, I mean, it's the person now. I was just the, the, the person who clicked it. Today. The person who clicked it first. That person cannot ask everyone. I mean, it, it would be nice if we that person would that. ask everyone, that. you know, uh, is, will it be okay if I click it today? No, and, that's why I said you no, as a professor should have just picked the day, say October 1st. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, on it. listen, even if I, I posted it already here, even if I posted it already here, even if I do this, you know, uh, if you don't take heed, then the responsibility falls upon you. You understand? You're not, I cannot spoon feed everyone. Okay, I have four different classes, four different sections of this class, and I post it on the same day. And as adults, it is your responsibility to react, to respond, keep up with the class, and to respond to it timely. And is to buy you sufficient time to do the first Look, as I said, the first um, 
The first, um, uh, the chapter two problem is due September 18th, right? So even if the first person activated on uh, uh, October 8th, I'm sorry, um, the first uh, chapter two problem is due October 8th. So if the first person activated on September 30th, it will still give you until October 14th, right? It will give you the window until October 14th. And um, so if you are doing, if you are willing to do the chapter two problems, then you would know it is due October 8th, and you would know that you should take action immediately to not to miss that, you know, one week. I mean, it was posted on October 29th, so it would give you until the uh, uh, the due date of October 8th, it will give you uh, at least one week window for you to do it. And even after that, you can, due date is October 8th, but it's just practice problems. So uh, it doesn't mean, you know, you won't have any more window. I mean, you, will, you can still do it past October 8th, but there will be late penalty, right? That's the thing. Um, so anyway, you can't rely on their temporary access forever. Temporary access is temporary. And it is, it is you know, uh, uh, unusual. And it is um, actually, um, they are doing you a favor. I mean, I, I had to request. Look, I had, I made, I went through, you know, I took the trouble and requesting, you know, additional two week super code for additional two weeks i i did it all you know for you and it's a favor actually i did you a favor and they did you a favor macro hill want you know they are for profit business think about it it's a for profit business they won't give you temporary access over and over they already gave you temporary access you didn't take advantage of it it expired, so I requested temporary access. Then it now it's your turn to take advantage of it. You can't you just say to right. right. You're absolutely right. Only thing I was just as was as adults as adults you should know that you must keep up with the class and you should you know um, when these things are. I cannot call you individually, email you individually. Email is going out to the group, entire group. And when it is posted there, it is automatically emailed. And it is your responsibility to read the email or go to the announcements, right? Check for updates in the announcements at least twice a week and keep up with the class, right? You can't, as adults, you can't keep expecting to be spoon fed every time. And there are 32 people currently, you know, so, uh, some of them, you see, these people, uh, it says license expired. That means their temporary access has expired. Uh, th this means their uh, initial temporary access, they used the initial temporary access, then it has expired. And since then, uh, these people are not using, uh, this means these people are not using their, uh, this super code. Because whoever, um uh, Whoever you know is uh, licensed means they are either using this super code or their own access code, right? But if you are using you know um, uh, the super code, it will expire around you know October 14th, okay? And um, uh, back here, and uh, I just want to uh, tell you that. So what you can see so far is only like three, um, three chapter problems because they are not visible yet. I will, you know, because I will recalibrate, I will recalibrate the dates, right? Recalibrate, I will have to recalibrate the dates. And once I recalibrate the dates, they will be all visible. They will become all visible. Okay. But, you know, um, so that's why all you see are these. This is the one that is due, and these are uh, this one. Uh, you see the padlock, the lock uh, icons there, the padlocks. That means they are not open yet, but 
it will be automatically activated at this time. This one will be automatically activated this time, and then um, you will see arrows here, right? So uh, quiz one is not on connect yet. Quiz one is not on connect. Um, quiz one is on Blackboard. Uh, but, you know, uh, after quiz one, midterm and everything, all the uh, uh, chapter problems will are on connect. And if you, by doing the chapter problems, you have a better chance of doing better in the exams. Okay, so that's really, you know, uh, training for your training through these, you know, chapter problems, your training and preparing yourself for the exams. Okay. All righty, so uh, uh, that took 36 minutes. And uh, oh, that, ah, so it closed. Okay. So um, now we got to get back on our track. So here we, um, I, I believe, uh, what was the uh, last? We talked about uh, two, two main sources of income last time. We talked about the income statement. Two major sources of income. Our primary source of income is revenue. Right, sales revenue, and the uh, secondary source of income is investment income. But investment income is relatively um, um, not the broad category. The broad category for um, the umbrella term is passive income. Okay, passive income, uh, investment income, rental income. They are all passive income because um, it's secondary to the uh, operating uh, operating activity of the uh, the company. The, every, as I said last time, every business must sell something. Every business must sell something, uh, and that's the primary source of income, right? And I said, you know, revenue can be defined very neatly, very neatly and concisely by uh, mathematically by price times quantity sold. Right? We talked about this last time, didn't we? Hmm? Does anyone remember that? <laughs> I guess nobody remembers. Um, if you don't remember, I will have to uh, remind you. Uh, so this is section... 1400 right and then la our last class was on the on September 9 uh, 30th so we talked about uh, all, all businesses basically the uh, um, the goal of all businesses is to can anybody give me an okay. but then revenue is not everything because Think about it. They have expenses. They have cost. I mean, uh, a manufacturer makes something, but to make something, they have to, uh, they have direct cost and indirect cost. I mean, they have manuf they have bare necessities. And after that, there is transportation and telecommunication. Transportation cost. Right? Actually, that is not. Uh, so if they bought, if Best Buy bought uh, the computer from. Oh, so actually. Okay, so we we uh, actually we covered more than just you know uh, the income, uh, and I uh, pretty much compared uh, you know um, uh, I compared the uh, income statement with you know first personal finance case personal you know income um, how income is earned, I basically you know uh, by labor right you. Uh, you put your labor and you know your salary is the uh, 
uh, uh, your earned income. Uh, it's like your salary is like your uh, sales revenue because sales uh, sales revenue of a company because uh, you provided you sold your labor. It could be you know either physical labor or mental labor, whatever. You sold your labor and your salary is the you know revenue for your labor, selling your labor. Uh, but you don't call that revenue <laughs> because uh, that revenue is the uh, uh, term for business, reserved for business. Uh, for you, it's uh, labor income or earned income. Anyway, uh, sales revenue is the earned income for the business. And it's, you know, simply, you know, um, we don't want to define it verbally because verbal definition is always, you know, uh, uh, unless you really, really, uh, unless you can define it really neatly in a neatly organized way and in a very concise way, unless you do it that way, um, it gets always loose at some point. And uh, people, everyone just, you know, um, everyone just, you know, um, uh, adds their own interpretation to that. So it's um, verbal definition tends to be uh, open-ended. An open-ended definition is not science. In science, nothing should be open-ended. It has to have closed-ended uh, outcome. It should have closed-ended result. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the best definition of revenue is price times quantity sold. And that's, there's nothing, there's nothing that beats this kind of definition. The mathematical definition is always the best because it is uh, concise, it is compact, concise, and no redundant, no redundant uh, element. Uh, unlike verbal definition, verbal definition can have a lot of redundant, um, redundant elements, but mathematical definition is uh, concise, compact, and indisputable, closed-ended, indisputable, and um, infallible, because it cannot go wrong, because that's the definition of revenue, right? For example, um, if you're Best Buy, and if Best Buy sells, you know, uh, uh, Model X, Dell Model X, let's say Best Buy sells only one type of computer, which is, you know, Dell Model X, and if Dell Model X is $500, I mean, that's the retail price by Best Buy. If they sell one unit, their revenue is 500. If they sell 10 units, their revenue is 5,000. If they sell uh, 100 units, their revenue will be 50,000. And if they sell 1,000 units, their revenue will be 500,000. So what do you see here? It's price times exactly quantity sold. It's exactly price times quantity sold. And if they sell zero unit, their revenue is zero, right? And what else can uh, what else can explain or define revenue better than this mathematical definition? It's indisputable, and it's infallible, and it's very concise, right? No frills, no, you know, uh, no frills, no fat. And you might wonder then, what if um, we sell more than one model? What if we sell n number of models? It's still the same thing. Suppose we have, uh, we sell three models, right? Model X, model Y, model Z, or model one, model two, model three. Then our revenue will be, price of model one times quantity sold of model one plus price of model two times quantity of model two quantity sold of model two plus price of model three times quantity sold of model three right this way we can expand it to any number of models and uh, let's say we are uh, we are, you know, uh, handling, we are uh, managing, you know, or selling, you know, n number of models. Then it's all price of i 
times quantity sold of i, where i runs from 1 through n. So that means, you know, summing up, summing up like this all the way to model n. So basically, you know, that's, that fits the, uh, that boils down to this definition, price times quantity sold, that's revenue, okay? And then we even talked about, uh, we went to uh, direct cost and uh, indirect cost. So first of all, direct cost is the, um, uh, direct cost is the uh, uh, cost that's directly related to production level. So it changes with the production level. Uh, just like revenue, think about it. Um, uh, if so, Dell makes this computer, there and the production cost is uh, two hundred dollars. So this is two hundred. That's what it's called unit production cost. Unit production cost, right? Makes sense because uh, uh, and. If it is $200 and that's directly um, uh, the cost incurred because of the capital, labor, and material that goes into one unit of this Model X, okay? So one unit of Model X is uh, $200. It costs $200. So Dell will be selling it to uh, Best Buy, let's say, for $300. Right, so then you know Dell's revenue will be 300 if they sell one unit. Uh, $300,000 if they sell 1,000 units, but if Dell, um, so it will be zero if they produce nothing, if they're you know product. So uh, you can tell direct cost is called direct. Uh, so it changes. Direct cost changes with the production level, right? As the production level goes up, uh, a direct cost goes up, or total variable cost goes up. I told you it's called total variable cost because um, this total amount changes or varies, varies, right? Varies with the production level. Okay, so total variable cost can be uh, rewritten as average variable cost times quantity built. Or quantity produced, all right? Average variable cost is nothing but it's the same thing as unit production cost. Unit production cost, right? Why? Think about it. If um, if we produced one thousand units, produced one thousand units, so the total variable cost is you know two hundred thousand dollars. If you divide it by, if you just divide this $200,000 by 1,000, then you get to 200, you get back to $200, right? So uh, then $200 is what? We, we, we got back to the unit production cost, right? Unit production cost per unit, right? Uh, but then you divided total by quantity, if you divide total by quantity, what is that called? It's called average, isn't it right? So average variable cost is the same thing as the unit production cost, okay? It's the same thing. Um, so the direct cost is called a uh, direct cost, not only because, <clears throat> not only because um, it is the uh, uh, cost of the direct inputs or factors of production, right? Capital, labor, raw material that goes into uh, uh, this Model X uh, is $200 per unit. And it changes, it's also, it changes directly with the output level. It changes directly with the output level, right? Uh, it's exactly the, uh, the total variable cost or the direct cost exact is exactly commensurate with um, or proportionate or proportional proportional with um, uh, the you know uh, output level, right? So it goes up, it increases with the uh, production level and decreases with the production level. Okay, that's why it's called direct cost. Now indirect cost is 
uh, literally, it's unrelated to the production level. It's the cost that's unrelated with the production level. Okay, uh, or at best, indirectly related to the production level. For example, now, um, so it's called operating expenses and accounting, right? That's accounting's terminology, just like CGS, cost of goods sold, is accounting's terminology. Whereas total variable cost is the um, uh, uh, microeconomics terminology. Total fixed cost is also microeconomics terminology, right? But uh, OPEX and total fixed cost are not exactly the same thing. It's roughly equivalent, but not exactly the same thing. Um, so um, operating expenses, if you um, look into the, uh, uh, the minor line items or the uh, components of the uh, operating expenses, it's rent, utilities, salaries, depreciation, R&D expenses, and marketing expense and things like that. Uh, but you know, uh, for example, uh, rent, this is very clear. Um, uh, rent doesn't go up or down uh, be, uh, with the uh, production level. I mean, um, we've been using, you know, uh, uh, examples like Dell. Uh, Dell is a huge manufacturer. So uh, rent, it doesn't, you know, uh, it doesn't, you know, come to your senses, right? Are they are they leasing the, yeah, they can, even if a big, big, uh, manufacturer, they can have their own plant, or they can lease a plant, and they can pay a rent. Uh, whichever is cheaper, they will uh, they will choose that. Uh, they will pick, you know. Uh, but they generally have their own plant because you know plant and equipment uh, is you know uh, 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 specific to their you know um, uh, model, right? But but let's say you are running a coffee shop, if you're running a coffee shop, um, you would be renting that space and your rent uh, doesn't depend on your production level. I mean, in a good month, you will be, on average month, let's say you will be selling, let's say you're selling only Americano, just one type of coffee, America, Americano only. Of course, if you're selling Americano, then you would have espresso too. But let's just make it simple. You're, you're just, you know, selling only one type of coffee, Americano. And uh, it's, let's say, $5 per cup. Oh, that's too expensive. But, you know, uh, let's say, just to make it simple, $5 per cup. And uh, in a, um, uh, uh, that's what you sell for, right? So on an average month, uh, you sell uh, 10,000 cups, 10,000 cups, and that's, you know, uh, $5 times 10,000, so $50,000, that's your revenue, but your production cost, your direct cost will be the cost of coffee bean, right? That's raw material, right? That's cost of coffee bean, and then, you know, cost of, you know, uh, machine, right? Uh, the, you know, you use, you know, uh, 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 espresso, the coffee machine, that's your equipment, right? Um, the cost of using that machine, right? And labor, uh, you, you hire a barista or, you know, uh, you hire someone. So there's labor. So let's say the uh, variable cost um, or unit per unit production cost of your coffee is $2 per cup, and then you sell it for, you know, $5. That your variable cost, your direct cost uh, on average month, on average month, it will be, you know, uh, $20,000 because on average you're selling 20,000 cups. But on a very good month, you may be selling, you know, um, uh, 20,000 uh, uh, cups, then your the revenue will double, right? Your direct cost also doubles. Uh, but the rent doesn't change. You pay the same rent, right? In a bad month, you may sell uh, not even 10,000, but you know, 5,000 cups. Then your revenue is halved, 
half, and uh, your direct cost is also half, but rent doesn't half, right? The rent doesn't get halved. Uh, you still pay the same rent. Uh, there are expenses that don't change with the production level. Hence, they are called, you know, uh, total fixed cost. Fixed meaning it is constant, right? It's fixed. It doesn't change with production level. In May, uh, operating expenses may slightly change, but it's relatively constant. And the most important thing is it doesn't change with the production level. It is constant. Uh, it is constant in terms of you know production uh, in, in relation to uh, the production level. It has nothing to do with the production level. Utility you pay is relatively constant, right? Um, uh, salaries. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to have to come back to salaries. Uh, R and D, uh, R and D expenses, marketing expense, depreciation. They are constant. They don't change with the production level. But when it comes to salaries, you know, here's the thing: you have two types of workers, right? Think about it. If you are Dell, um, if you are Dell, you're a computer manufacturer. You have two types of workers. Isn't that right? Hmm? You can imagine a, a manufacturing business and you can easily understand why there are two types of workers. First of all, it is crucial to have production workers. Isn't that right? The workers that are directly, directly engaged in production activity. The workers that are working on the assembly line. Okay, workers that are working on the assembly line. And the, uh, the workers that are working on the assembly line uh, and the other type of staff are not, so there's production staff and non-production staff. Non-production staff are basically administrative, administrative or clerical, administrative, or clerical staff. They are not directly engaged in production activity, right? So think about it. Um, if you're uh, suddenly your uh, uh, demand is exploding, suddenly demand for Model X is exploding. So you have to double the production. If you have to double the production, what do you have to do? everything in the direct cost will have to double. In other words, you'll have to use twice as much raw material, right? You'll have to double the raw material. You'll have to double the usage of the capital. And I told you, capital means physical capital, right? Plant and equipment, right? Machinery, right? Capital is basically, um, you know, capital originally means meant physical capital, right? Means of production. Uh, nowadays, capital means most like money capital, but originally capital there are uh, originally capital means physical capital means of production, right? Uh, so there are two types of capital: physical capital and money capital. Of course, with money capital, you can acquire more physical capital. There has to be money capital before physical capital, right? But of course, in the days before, in the days before money, even in primitive days. Uh, primitive man, cavemen also um, made tools, right? Uh, with the tools, they could hunt uh, better, uh, hunt more. They could, you know, um, if they uh, once they started agriculture with the tools, they the production um, increased by using tools. So even before days of money capital. Uh, uh, there was physical capital, right? Um, so think about it. Uh, if they have to double the production, everything will have to double, right? All the factors of production, in other words, inputs of production will have to double. Usage of capital will have to double. Uh, raw materials will have to double. Labor, labor will have to double, meaning uh, there are two things that can happen. If you have to double the production, um, you can double the number of hours, right? 
holding the uh, current uh, production workers, number of holding the uh, uh, current number of current production workers steady, constant, you can double their hours. Or you can double the number of production workers. In other words, new hires. But then second option is not preferred. Second option is um, uh, not preferred by most uh, uh, management. Why? First of all, um, uh, you cannot hire them. I mean, currently you have 100, 100 production workers. Doubling them means, you know, uh, you have to hire additional 100 workers. But uh, these are, uh, in, in manufacturing, uh, let's say you're working in an automobile, uh, in an automobile uh, manufacturer, right? Like Ford, Chrysler. And if you're working on a, a production line, assembly line, you are a skilled labor, skilled labor, skill. You have skills. You are a skilled labor. And this skill doesn't come overnight. You have to go through years of training for that, right? Also, on a computer uh, manufacturing plant, um, the skilled they want skilled workers, and if you are getting you know uh, uh, like hundred additional hundred temporary, I mean these are not skilled people. I mean if they are skilled people, they would be working. They would have a permanent job with another you know like Compaq or you know Hewlett Packard or um, other you know computer. IBM or other computer manufacturers. So it's hard to get skilled, 100 skilled workers on temporary basis because it's temporary basis. It's not permanent. Why? Uh, the demand is suddenly surging, you know, demand has surged. So suddenly, you know, you have to double the production. But after that, after that, these additional 100 workers will have to be laid off. So first of all, um, um, they have to be, they are hired uh, as temps. And if they are hired as uh, temps, then they, they are not skilled enough, right? Even the, uh, the reg permanent workers, you know, they will have to go through like six months to one year training, you know, uh, to be fully, you know, uh, uh, utilized as, you know, production line worker. So this is not, um, uh, second option is not uh, a viable option. Uh, so most likely they will double the hours, right? But then this cannot go on forever. Doubling the hours, you know, um, uh, people generally work, you know, uh, eight hours a day. As you get extra pay, of course, you know, 16 hours, you know, you, your, in, your pay will, paycheck will double. So you may work 16 hours, maybe, you know, uh, up to maximum of two weeks, right? But you cannot do, I mean, you will, you will collapse. If you work 16 hours a day, five days a week, or sometimes even seven days a week, because you have to meet, you know, uh, there's a sudden, you know, surge of demand. You have to meet that demand. Then you have to uh, uh, put out, you have to churn out these products at, you know, a matter of days, then you may have to work double shift, uh, 16 hours a day, seven days a week for two weeks. That would be the maximum. Physically, people will, you know, um, wear out, they will burn out, and they will collapse. So, but anyway, um, uh, if it has to be, um, uh, so it will have to be some type of, you know, some combination of the two. But most, mostly, they will uh, double the hours, and uh, whatever cannot be, uh, uh, if cannot, if that cannot be sustained, uh, that can at that point they will hire some temporary workers, temporary skilled workers. What they do is usually they get the uh, uh, they hire temporarily the retired retired workers, retirees from their own company. Right, because retirees are skilled and they are willing to work. If they are willing to work uh, on temporary basis, why not? But you know, uh, one thing is clear: 
Um, the salaries paid to the uh, uh, production workers, uh, I mean, uh, labor, labor will have to double. The wages will have to double. Capital usage will have to double, um, right? Either, you know, either in number of hours or either in number of people, it will have to double. <clears throat> but think about the uh, uh, clerical staff or administrative staff. A good example of administrative staff is a secretary, right? So think about it. when the production level doubles. Uh, do you need to double the? Uh, do you need to double the uh, number of secretaries? Or do you need to uh, double the number of secretary hours? Hmm? Are you there, <laughs> Peter? Uh, Eva, your microphone is on. Eva, Peter, hours? Secretary's hours? Look. I think uh, maybe you would. No. No. Oh. First of all, secretaries are not directly engaged in production activities, right? When you double the production level, the number of hours or number number of production workers will have to double, but secretaries, there's no need for doubling the number of secretaries or their hours, right? You understand? Just like the rent, regardless of regardless of your um, regardless of your uh, revenue, regardless of your production level, rent doesn't change. Right? Let's go back to that uh, coffee shop example. Right? During a good month, your revenue doubles because, you know, you sell double, you know, um, double the amount of, you know, uh, uh, coffee, you know, cups, double the uh, number of cups that you sell. So then all the direct cost will go uh, double. Uh, in other words, you know, coffee bean, right? Uh, usage of the coffee machine, they all double. Uh, number of barista hours will double. But let's say in a coffee shop, you have a secretary. <laughs> when, when you, of course, in the uh, coffee shops generally don't have secretary, but secretaries are not directly engaged in the production. You, secretaries get paid the same, same paycheck. They get same salary because their, num their hours don't double or their numbers don't double, right? Wages, salaries paid to the secretaries or um, uh, clerical staff don't, because they, uh, clerical staff, right? Their hours or their numbers don't depend on the production level, okay? You gotta make this very clear. Everyone is clear about that. That's why it is indirect cost, right? It's that's why it is indirect cost. Okay. It's a uh, part of the uh, operating expenses. So uh, we have listed everything that is, you know, uh, uh, that uh, that constitutes uh, direct cost and indirect cost. And again, indirect indirect cost is also called uh, a fixed cost. And I told you, um, total fixed cost is the microeconomics uh, terminology, and it is uh, sl uh, slightly different from operating expenses. Now, in microeconomics, they focus more on initial investment. What is initial investment? It's the startup capital. Startup capital. Think about it. So you are Dell. Your company is Dell. So it's a manufacturing business. So uh, man, the difference between manufacturing and retail is that manufacturing has plant and equipment, physical assets. There can be no manufacturing without plant and equipment, whereas retail doesn't have any plant and equipment. All they need is just a, a store space and they, their inventory. In other words, the merchandise they, they bought from the uh, manufacturing. So 
Retail can easily open up and close down. Isn't that right? Retail can easily open up and close down. Uh, if they want to close down, uh, all they need to do is just sell off all their inventory, right? And close the business, right? And then uh, uh, because they have been paying the rent, you know, they, once their you know, uh, lease expires, then that's it. They can just move, move on. But manufacturing, they cannot easily close down because they have plant and equipment, and, right? So um, plant and, uh, so let's say it, it costs you know, $50 million to build this plant and equipment. For Dell um, to start up this business, they have to invest already. They have to invest already $50 million uh, into construction of this plant and uh, construction of this plant. And then they have to um, put in the uh, production equipment into that plant. So even before, <clears throat> even before they start the production, they are already, they are already uh, stuck with this initial investment, which is basically a startup capital, $50 million startup capital. Uh, and this is a fixed cost. It is called sunk cost, sunk meaning you know this 50 million dollars is sunk into this business so whether you uh, there's no way you can bail out because um, to bail out you have to recover this initial investment right so once you um, uh, once you start up a manufacturing then uh, there is a, a sunk cost and you have to uh, go on. You have to make something and sell something, right? And from uh, the revenue generated, uh, from the revenue generated, uh, with the revenue generated from sale, you have to recover this uh, sunk cost. And then you can uh, bail out and move on. But until then, right, you have to keep going, right? So manufacturing is a... Uh, a huge commitment. Retail, you can easily open up and close down and move on, right? But manufacturing, until you recover your initial investment, right? And made, you know, uh, on top of the initial investment, you should you should have made, you know, the target return, right? Like 20% return or whatever, whatsoever. Otherwise, you know, uh, uh, you can't just, you know, wash off your hands and bail out. Now, so that initial investment is a fixed cost. That $50 million, think about it. It doesn't change with the production level. It is already there even before starting production, right? Hence, it's called the sunk cost. It's fixed cost. And uh, that's the main focus of the uh, microeconomics. Uh, of course, you know, um, uh, these line items, such as, you know, um, uh, they are relatively constant and they are relatively fixed. So uh, they also consider, they call it, you know, uh, fixed cost, but it's slightly different from the total fix, fixed cost that microeconomics is focusing more on, okay? And in accounting, they focus more on, um, like, you know, uh, uh, month to month, quarter to quarter, uh, operating uh, uh, expenses, um, but um, eventually, you know, uh, in operating expenses, the uh, sunk cost is also spread out, spread uh, over, you know, a uh, uh, long horizon, long time horizon, because fifth, something like fifty million dollars, you cannot recover. Uh, you know, a year or two, maybe it will take, you know, uh, uh, four, uh, five years to recover all of that, right? Or even longer. So um, now we have, uh, so that uh, now that we have de uh, detailed all the uh, uh, major components of income and expenses, right? Next, what do we do? 
um, if we have, you know, uh, income, and then we have, you know, direct cost and indirect cost, CGS and, you know, OPEX. So um, we will have to subtract uh, some of these two line items, some of these two, we'll have to subtract expenses from income, right? That means, you know, we are subtracting uh, some of these two from this net revenue. And the result, think about it. Normally, if you, uh, if you um, subtract expenses from income, that's generally considered profit. But the exact term is not profit yet. It's called operating profit or operating income. Operating profit or operating income. Uh, uh, another name for that is EBIT. It stands for earnings before interest and taxes. Okay, earnings before interest and taxes. So um, uh, we're already out of time. Uh, so I'm gonna have to continue um, in the next class on Thursday. Um, but once again, uh, today we are actually, we are done with, um, we are done with the uh, topic two. You might wonder, uh, why aren't we still going on? Uh, look, I've been telling you, uh, the main lecture is this. This is the main lecture, not the collaborate, right? The lecture videos posted in our uh, topics folder, right? We go by that. That's the main lecture. Collaborate session is only a review, right? So um, today we are done with all of that, right? Um, so that's why we can do, you know, uh, quiz one. And uh, uh, factoring one, two, three, uh, I think factoring one, two, three, uh, and yeah, was like from last Thursday, four, five, and uh, financial statements part three, that must be for, from today. So this one is optional. Um, so um, if you, if you wonder, so how do I, you know, uh, watch the, uh, the videos that are old, uh, more than five days old, I've been telling you, you have, you know, YouTube channel for that, right? You have YouTube channel. I gave you my YouTube channel and playlist. So you can, you know, uh, study whatever, you know, the previous, uh, all the uh, previous lectures. Okay. All righty. So uh, that's it for today. That's it for today. Um, so I will, uh, I will see you guys on this Thursday. And please don't forget um, the Connect uh, Chapter 2 problem is... So what's, your, what's your YouTube channel again? You uh, put in the chat. Uh, it's CUNY... Uh, no, that's FMB 230. So uh, it's, it's just like the... Um, It's just like the, um, this course number. It's CUNY BMCC FMB 100. Okay. Okay? okay FMB 100. Okay? All right. So, I'll see you, Professor. Okie dokie. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Have a good um, the rest of the day. And uh, uh, good luck with your uh, quiz one. It's you know, starting on uh, Friday. Okay? All right, take care, everyone. I will. Uh, all right, um, Professor. All right, take care. Uh, take stop care. Recording. All righty, I'm signing out. Stop, stop recording.